please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the 2019 chemistry questionnaire of the qualifying examinations for applicants or Japanese government or MEC scholarships for undergraduate students. The answer key and original questions are linked in the description. Problem 1 of 4. Fill A to D in the sentences below with appropriate values. Calculate the values to three significant figures for A, B, and D. In this video, we will only do problem 1, so we will only be looking at A and B. The dissociation energies of H2 and O2 are 436 kilojoules per mole and 498 kilojoules per mole, respectively, and the bond energy of OH bond is 463 kilojoules per mole. The heat of vaporization for water, liquid, is 44.0 kilojoules per mole. Therefore, the heat of formation of water, liquid, is A kilojoules per mole. Furthermore, Hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form gaseous hydrogen peroxide as follows. In the above reaction, 142 kilojoules per mole is released as heat. Hence, the bond energy of OO bond in the hydrogen peroxide molecule is B kilojoules per mole. Relevant to this problem is the concept of heat of reaction, denoted delta H. This is also called the enthalpy of reaction. We know that the enthalpy of reaction is the sum of the change in enthalpies in the products minus the sum of the change in enthalpies in the reactants. And here we have V sub P and V sub R to denote the appropriate stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced equation. And because enthalpy is a state variable that means doesn't matter the path doesn't matter and the change will always be the same if the starting and the ending state are the same and so this enthalpy of reaction can actually be calculated in several ways and one of the ways is using the heat of formation which we denote to be h sub f in this case and the, so we can calculate the heat of reaction using this. We have the heat of formation of the products minus the heat of formation of the reactants. Again, we sum them all with the appropriate stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced equation. Furthermore, we can also compute this using the binding or rather the bond dissociation energies. In this case, we first sum the dissociation energies, bond dissociation energies of the reactants first, then subtract that of the products. So the difference here and here is that for the, if we have the bond dissociation energies, we have to do the reactants first. If we have the enthalpies of formation, we have to do the products first. So we just have to remember that. For the first blank, we are interested in the heat of formation of liquid water. In other words, if we have the elemental hydrogen and we make it react with the elemental oxygen, then what will be this heat of formation? That is the heat that is either released or absorbed to produce liquid water. First thing we do is we break this into two reactions because we know that usually when hydrogen reacts with oxygen gas we will get water that is gas so water vapor so we we put that there because this is the usual reaction and so we have values for these for these quantities for this reaction and in this case let's denote the enthalpy of reaction here as H sub F H2O gas. And then to get to liquid state, we get the gas and then we make it liquid. And it is given in the problem that to do this, we need to release negative or rather 44.0 kilojoules per mole of 
of gas of water. So we now know that to transform this into liquid, we need to release this amount of energy. And so to get from here to here, the processes would be from here to here, then from here to here. So if we add all that, that will be the this reaction here. And so the total enthalpy of formation of liquid water is actually the sum of these. And so we have this to be this, and then this to be this. So now this is what we've got. And what we're actually interested is this bit. And so we try to find this bit. Now we will attempt to compute the enthalpy of formation of gaseous water. And that is from this reaction. We know that there are several ways to compute the heat of reaction here. One is using the heat of formation. But if we compute using the heat of formation, we notice that this is just zero and this is just zero. And gaseous water is the heat of formation of gaseous water is actually the thing that we're looking for. So using this formula here would not help us. What can help us is using this other formula because we are given in the problem the bond dissociation energy of both hydrogen and oxygen. So let us use this formula instead. So the heat of, the, of this reaction, which is equal to the heat of formation of gaseous water, is equal to the first we sum the bond dissociation energies of the reactants. Then we subtract the bond dissociation energies of the products, in this case, gaseous water. So for the reactants, this is given in the problem. It's 436 and 498. We just have to be careful because in this balanced equation, we have one half here as the stoichiometric coefficient for the oxygen. So we add one half here. And then we do not know yet the bond the total bond dissociation energy for water, gaseous water. And what we mean by that is when we decompose water into its elements, oxygen and hydrogen. So we don't know that. But this we can compute from the given. And so when we compute that, we get this minus this. Now we are getting closer to what we're looking for. And now we just have to find this bond dissociation energy to completely break hydrogen, or rather water, gaseous water into its component elements. Let's consider gaseous water. This is made up of two hydrogens and an oxygen. And more precisely, we have a hydrogen which is bonded to the oxygen, and this oxygen is bonded to another hydrogen. So if we break this bond, this is actually an OH bond. And this is given in the problem to have a bond energy of 463 kilojoules per mole. Now, when we dissociate that, we get this bond, one more bond. And again, this is an OH bond. So based on the given in the problem, we can also break this into an O and an H and get 463 again. And so the total bond dissociation energy for gaseous water, if we want to dissociate it into its components, elemental components, hydrogen and oxygen, what we do is we add this one, which is for the first bond that we break, and this one, which is for the second bond that we break. And they are both OH bond, so we can use the given in the problem. And so that is just 2 times 463, we get 926 kilojoules per mole. From the previous slides, we have the following equations. So first, we know that we're looking for this quantity here, and we know it to be this quantity minus 44. And then in the previous slide, we learned how to get this quantity. So that is this, and then we have we have it as 685 minus this quantity. And in the previous slide, we learned how to get this quantity, which is just 926. And then what I'll do next is that I'll add them all together, because if we add them all together, we see that this bit here actually cancels with this bit because they're on different sides of the equation. 
And just so this BE here cancels with this BE here, I also added a negative sign here. And doing that, they will be on the they will be on different sides of the equation and they will just cancel. And we will be left with this, which is what we're actually looking for. So I'm just going to do the cancellation more explicitly. So this bit now cancels with this bit. And so if we add all them, we see this to be here. That's this plus 0 plus 0. Now here we have negative 44 plus 9, or rather 685 minus 926 we get negative 285 kilojoules per mole and this is the amount of energy 285 kilojoules per mole is the amount of energy that will be released for the second blank we need to find the bond dissociation energy of the OO bond in hydrogen peroxide so let's imagine hydrogen peroxide that is actually water with an additional O bonded to this O here. And so if we want to break that additional O from this O, that's what we're looking for. How much is that energy that we need to, to add? And we already know the bond dissociation energy of water. If we want to break this into its elements, oxygen and hydrogen, we know this from the previous problem. And we know that this is 926. And so the total bond dissociation energy of hydrogen peroxide if you want to decompose it into its elemental components is this which is the bond dissociation energy of the oxygen oxygen bond plus the 926 from the water here and this is the bond dissociation energy of hydrogen peroxide now we know that this is related we can actually put this and here, if we look at the equation that was given in the problem, so the given equation is this. So we can compute the enthalpy of this reaction using the bond dissociation energies. And also, the problem gives the value for the total enthalpy of reaction for this reaction, and that's minus 142 kilojoules per mole, meaning 142 kilojoules per mole is emitted or is released to the environment and we know that now so that that goes to this bit and we also know the bond dissociation energies of this and this so we can compute this bit and for this bit that is what we have here and therefore we use this equation so that we can find this unknown now, we just write here what we know, again, this equation here, and this was given in the problem. Again, this is this heat of reaction, so we put that here, and this bit here, for the reactants, water, or rather hydrogen and oxygen, we do hydrogen and oxygen, and we already know this from the given again, and then for the products, we just have hydrogen peroxide and we know from the previous slide that this hydrogen peroxide bond dissociation energy is actually composed of this bond dissociation energy for oxygen oxygen plus the bond dissociation energy of the water and we know water that's 926 and this one sums sums to this and so bond dissociation energy for OO we can compute that by doing this subtraction and that turns out to be 150 kilojoules per mole. This is the amount of energy that needs to be absorbed to break the OO bond in the hydrogen peroxide molecule. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!